Hello, hello, UST listener. Oh my goodness. I just, I, I want to say that my guest today, she is someone that I have been wanting to bring onto the show for a couple of years. I read her book, uh, Believe It, and just had my jaw drop. It, literally, my jaw was like to the floor the whole time. Her story is incredible. She's incredibly inspiring. What I love about Jamie is she's so genuine and real and vulnerable and puts her heart out there. Um, today's conversation, I'm recording this after we chatted and definitely make yourself a cozy spot, get your earbuds in, put yourself in a place where you can listen up because this conversation is for you. It is for you to reconnect to your heart, to your worthiness. We go way deep into even like, what does it mean to feel self-worth? How to do that? How to get unstuck? How to stop feeling like there's a lack and unfulfillment? And we dove into this whole idea that, I don't want to give it away, so I won't go too much farther, but how you can start to really build that foundation that knows you're enough you're worthy, you're enough, no matter what. So let me tell you really quickly, I'm gonna introduce Jamie Kern Lima. Jamie is a self-made entrepreneur. She is a champion of women, philanthropist, keynote speaker, and co-founder of It Cosmetics, a company she started in her living room and sold to L'Oreal for $1.2 billion. You heard that right with a B. Becoming the first female CEO in L'Oreal's 100 plus year history. She's on the Forbes richest self-made women's list and is an active investor in more than 15 companies. Jamie's is a journey of starting It Cosmetics from her living room, not paying herself for the first three years, hiring countless and hearing countless no's from retailers and investors, all while working 100 plus hours to keep her dream alive. Her passion for her mission, unremitting perseverance, hard work, and belief led her to turning her no into an eventual yes, presenting and selling her products in more than a thousand live shows on QVC and eventually building the largest beauty brand in their history. Hello, <laughs> Jamie. And by the way, is one of the most humble people I've met. Just, just saying. Jamie is passionate about inspiring and mentoring entrepreneurs, building businesses, making a difference in the lives of women and girls and giving back in a big way. As a highly sought after speaker, Jamie loves sharing stories of inspiration, underestimation, rejection, overcoming self-doubt, and never giving up. And she's especially passionate about inspiring, elevating, and empowering women entrepreneurs and women whether you're an entrepreneur or not. So I just want to say you get buckle up, my friend, get your seatbelt on. You are in for an incredibly powerful conversation. I'm so honored to be here with you. As always, this is about truly living into your truest USG, you, your, your, your real identity, your real self, who you were born to be. And I think this conversation is going to give you so much so much wisdom, energy, tools, ways to make sure you are loving up, connecting, aligning with your most precious, genuine, one-of-a-kind self. All right. I can't wait for you to, to listen in. And as always, sending you love. Well, I just want to say, Jamie, there are already tears in my eyes. Like I literally <laughs> meeting you, talking to you, connecting with you today. I'm so grateful. I'm so honored. I have just loved you, your energy, the work you're doing in the world, and this new, beautiful, amazing book worthy that you are birthing. And thank you for being here on the USG podcast. Julie, thank you so much for having me. It's going to be an amazing episode and conversation. I'm honored and grateful to be here with you. So thank you. And I'm so excited about Worthy. Um, <laughs> so thank you. Yes. I usually don't record this part, but I thought we would do this together is just set an intention. I like to set an intention before any conversation. And I, uh, for me, I just think the message you're sharing is so needed and important. And so mm. my prayer, my intention is that this conversation, that your book blesses everybody that listens and that everybody that listens shares it with their friends and that it blesses you, me, the whole world. That is the intention I am setting right here. I love it. <laughs> Perfect. So I would love to just dive in. I, I actually think before we get into the book, um, to this book worthy, for those that 
I would imagine most listening know about you, but if they don't, maybe we could just kind of start with a little bit about your story because you, and I know it's a big story. <laughs> I, I read your first book, Believe It, and I was like, I love this woman. What a rock star. You just, uh, you really inspired me. And so for those who don't know about how this came to be, because they could say, oh, she's, you know, founder of It Cosmetics and now author of two books. Maybe just to share a little bit about your beginning and how you even got into uh, to this whole world in this in this work. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think if if anyone kind of knows my story, or maybe they Google me, they'll probably see the the story the press loves to always tell is Denny's waitress builds billion dollar company, um, and that is true. Uh, but I would say, you know. On a deeper level, my real story that maybe a lot of people can also relate to is most of my life, I've, I've been a girl and then a woman who struggled with so much self-doubt, <laughs> um, who really did not, um, self-doubt, God doubt, body doubt, all of it. Um, and for most of my life, I, I didn't believe in myself. And uh, and there are so many moments. I think I think it's so easy to always see kind of the highlight reel of people's lives, especially now in a social media day and age where they're like, oh, wow, she built a billion dollar business or, oh, wow, everything looks so great or whatever. It looks like a fairy tale. Um, and my real story is, is a girl who didn't, you know, believe in herself and, and was on a mission to learn how to. Um, and so, you know, for me, um, and maybe a lot of people can relate to this, there are so many things in my life that I actually didn't go for it, even though I felt like that whisper inside I felt, you know, when I prayed about it, I feel like I'm supposed to do it or, you know, that kind of thing. Or I just had this kind of gut feeling like, oh, I'm supposed to put my work out there. My, I share my idea, like that kind of a thing. And a lot of my life, I literally doubted myself out of my own destiny. And, you know, um, uh, and I've been kind of obsessed for many years on trying to figure out um, how to overcome self doubt and build self belief, and how to overcome God doubt and all of those things. And and you know, my first book, Believe It, is really my story about kind of learning to believe in myself. And and why I wrote Worthy, um, Julie, is like even at at this point in my life, I thought I had a lot of things figured out. And what I didn't realize was, oh my gosh, I've been focusing so much on my whole life of trying to build self confidence. And I didn't realize it is completely different than self-worth. And I got to a point in my life where I had, you know, all the things the world tells us should make us happy and fulfilled and is what success looks like. And, you know, I had told my company for all this money, all the things were going really well. And I had a lot of confidence, but I didn't realize why deep down inside, I still didn't feel like I was enough. And, uh, and even at this point in my life with these things happening on the outside, Forbes magazine, all the things on the outside, I still was sabotaging certain things and I was still um, not fulfilled. And so in the past three years, I've been just so obsessed with studying self-worth, which is so different than self-confidence. And even three years ago, I didn't know that. I didn't realize how fundamentally different they are. Um, and I realize we're we're still in a day and age where so many people confuse the two. Um, and then, you know, for anybody listening and watching us right now, anybody who's who's part of your community, I think so many people can relate to this where it's we always think like, oh, because we're raised thinking once I finally get this certain thing, then I'll be happy or then I'll be fulfilled. And for some of us, it's kids or uh, a, a, a romantic relationship or marriage or white picket fence or six pack abs or the dream car or a certain job title or fame, whatever it might be. And, and we work so, so, so hard to get the thing. And like for anyone listening who's ever had this big goal and they thought, when I finally get that, then I'm going to be happy. And then you work sometimes for months, years, decades, you finally get it. And then if you've ever had this happen where you arrive at it and you're like, you're happy for a while, maybe a few months or a few weeks or a few hours, and then all of a sudden you feel like you still kind of feel like something's missing or like you still feel not enough. And so then what most of us do is we think, oh, well, I've just got to achieve more. I've just got to please more people. I've just got to be celebrated more. And, and then we work harder and harder and harder for that next thing. And 
for a lot of people, this is this never ending cycle and they never know why their entire life, they don't feel like they're enough or that it's enough. And I kind of found myself in that situation. And so, um, and what I realized is I had built a whole lot of self-confidence, but underneath it all, I, I didn't have a lot of self-worth, which is why um, I had the things the world celebrated, but I wasn't fulfilled and, 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 I, and I personally didn't feel it was enough. And so, um, and so that's really why I wrote Worthy, which saw that, you know, there's over 20 tools in the book on how do you really build self-worth because self-worth is that one thing that sort of changes everything in life and and and, and truly like self-worth is our ceiling in every area of life whether it's our businesses our our personal relationships our friendships our joy like underneath all of it self-worth is our ceiling and and I, I talk about this a lot in the book that we don't like we don't soar to the level of our goals and dreams in life. We stay stuck at the level of our self worth. And when it comes to our our you know ambitions and our goals and our hopes and our dreams and even our personal relationships, uh, uh, that our relationship with our own body, our relationship with our our self self love, like we don't we don't rise to what we believe is possible. We fall to what we believe we're worthy of. So when you change your self-worth and build your self-worth, you literally change your entire life. And so for me, it's just, um, you know, something that there's a famous quote by Rory Vaden who says, in life, your best position to serve the person you once were. And for me, the person I once was, and I'm still on the journey of, of, of becoming beyond that it is just struggling to believe I'm enough. And it's wild too, Julie, like, you know, right now, 80% of women don't believe they're enough, uh, despite being able to a lot of times hide it on the outside. But 80% of us don't believe enough. 75% of uh, female executives deal with imposter syndrome. And 91% of girls and women don't love their body. So, you know, the time for change has come because when you fundamentally do not believe you're enough, it is a lie. It is a lie. and so. I wrote worthy for like, how do you unlearn those lies that lead to self doubt and then, and then ignite those truths that wake up worthiness. Woo. That is, uh, it just hit right here, right? Like just, Mm -hmm. it just hit me really, really hard as you're saying that. I, I, I have a a lot of different questions, Jamie. And I, I think one of the things you said a few times I'd love to unpack with you is this is really interesting. And I can hear people, I can hear listeners like, wait, what? It's not the same. You said self-confidence is not the same as self-worth. Can we start unpacking that? Because I think that there are going to be people that that's going to be the mind glowing moment for them, <laughs> like that alone. And I will say it's fascinating to me watching from the outside, just it's really important. I love that you are speaking about this because on the outside, having all these, you know, you said the things, the achievements that seem so, um, what we're craving, what we're, the, 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 the dangling carrot, right? And you, it seems like, oh, you've had all those. And so to hear, you know, my brain's like, wait, what? You struggled? And I, I've read, you know, I've read you talk about this, but to hear you say it out loud why you've struggled with self-worth, like I'm not computing, but this is so powerful and so vulnerable and beautiful you're sharing about it because 80% of women feeling this, I mean, I know I've certainly struggled with this in the past. Heck yes. So maybe we can start with the like self-confidence, self-worth, like what is the difference? Yeah. Hey, it's Julie. I'm just stopping in really, really quick to let you know that enrollment is now open for my next cohort of my Conscious Coach Life Coach Certification Training. Our next cohort starts soon. Space is limited. So if you'd like to learn more, just go head over to julieriesler.com forward slash certification. And if this is calling you and you're feeling that urge to help others to make a bigger difference and to do that inner work with me as your guide, Go save your seat now, and I will hopefully see you soon. Okay, back to the show. Yeah. Yeah, this was such a massive, like, aha moment for me in my life when I realized this. And it was really just three years ago. Um, and uh, and they are completely different. And when we hear people talk about self-confidence or self-worth, or we kind of just think they're the same thing. And we think how to build them is the same, but they're very, very different. So 
So to kind of break it down um, for everyone listening, so, so uh, self-confidence, while it's an internal trait, is uh, so much based on the external, on things going on around us. Self-confidence is very fragile. It's very volatile. So self-confidence is your assessment of your own skills and abilities, your uh, willingness to try and go for it, um, how you feel you stack up and compare to others, if you're winning or losing at the moment, uh, how much of the world's definition of success you feel like you have. So self-confidence can fluctuate like so easily. There's studies that show, you know, the, the boxer that wins the match is automatically 30% more confident. So our confidence can be high or low based on all the things and it fluctuates. Our self-worth is the deep internal knowing that you are worthy of love and belonging exactly as you are, not as you achieve, not as how much of the world's definition of success you have, not as your past or past mistakes or failures, but the, the innate knowing and belief you are fully worthy of love and belonging exactly as you are. And they're very different. And, 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 and here's what happens is kind of like what we were um, talking about a second ago is is when we have these big goals or dreams. And actually, when you think about almost every advertisement that we see, um, almost every question a friend or family asks us who hasn't seen us in a while, you know, how are you doing? How's work going? Are you married yet? Are you gonna have more kids? Like, and then we see the advertisements that show like, oh, our emotions and our problems are solved when we get that car <laughs> or when, when we get the six pack abs or whatever it might be. And, what happens is, you know, and I go, I go into this tool and worthy about called the ultimate fulfillment equation, but um, just to break it down really simply, you know, fulfillment in life, for fulfillment in life, we need self-confidence. It's very important. Self-confidence is very important and we need to be growing and we need to be contributing to something greater than ourselves, which could be huge causes. It could be just simply being that person that says hello to someone else and helps them feel less alone and more enough. We need to be, you know, building self-confidence, growing and contributing beyond ourselves. Those three things are very important to, to be happy and fulfilled in life, but all of them are multiplied by our level of self-worth to get our actual level of fulfillment. So if we have zero self-worth, we are feeling zero fulfilled, no matter how much confidence we build, no matter how much growth we're, we're, we're achieving or how much we're contributing to others, and it's why, you know, for anyone who's had this experience, I certainly have, and maybe a lot of people listening have had this as well, where you go, you work really, really hard for that thing, right? That you finally think is going to make you happy and you arrive at it and you don't know why you're not fulfilled and it didn't solve all your problems. And then you work harder for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And why you never feel enough deep down inside is because while those things are important, right? In the pursuit of them, you're building a lot of self-confidence which is great and important. You're, you're growing, which is great and important. A lot of times we're, you know, in service to someone else and to others in that journey, which is great and important. But none of that builds self-worth, which is different, which is why there are so many people that will spend their entire life in this cycle of just hustling and achieving, achieving, achieving. And again, it can be really great to your overall fulfillment, but it never leads to you feeling you're enough, ever. There's no amount of achievement or of, you know, any of that that leads to feeling like you're enough. And so, so self-worth and self-confidence are really, really different. I'm going to see if I can pull up um, just one little thing to kind of talk about the difference. I've actually never read this out loud before, um, but I just got this copy. Uh, and so it's right in this, in the galley. So I'm just going to read this um, on your show. And it's just a little passage that explains the difference. Um, and so self-confidence is what you show on the outside. Self-worth is what you feel on the inside. Um, self-confidence is based on mastery. Self-worth is based on identity. Self-confidence is what you can do. Self-worth is who you are. Self-confidence is believing you're skilled enough. Self-worth is believing you are enough. Um, self-confidence fluctuates based on your environment. Self-worth is stable through every environment. Self-confidence is fragile. Self-worth is foundational. 
Uh, Self-confidence confidence is the belief in your abilities as a person. Self-worth is the belief in your value as a person. Self-confidence is I'm striving to earn love. Self-worth is knowing I am love. Self-confidence gives you drive. Self-worth gives you peace. Self-confidence is optional. Self-worth is essential. Self-confidence eventually surrenders and self-worth ultimately prevails. Self-worth is your foundation. Self-confidence is that house you build on top of it. Your house will only ever be as secure as the foundation that it's built upon. So the two are very different and how, and this might be a big, huge, like I think of the um, emoji with the brain exploding because this is what it was for me in my life, but you can have all the things going right. And when you don't feel like you're enough, here's how low self-worth can manifest in your life. And in case someone needs to know, like, wait a minute, do I actually have low self-worth? If you have really low self-worth, what it can look like is you are stuck. You are stuck. You know you have an idea you want to put out there in the world, or you know you have a book inside of you, and you're like, why have I not written this? Or you know, you know you want to make more friends as an adult, but you're not uh, putting yourself out there. Like you are stuck, and and not realizing that you're not actually going for the thing because underneath it all, you don't feel worthy of it because our self worths are ceiling. So low self worth can look like you're stuck. If you have sort of medium self worth. Uh, it can look like you're going for the thing, you're putting it, you're going, you're going after it, you're working hard, you're all the things, but then you like somehow hit a ceiling or you sabotage yourself along the way. You put the really great guy in the friend zone and you don't know why you're not attracted to them. You like those kind of things, right? You hit a ceiling in your business or your goals and you don't know why you're sabotaging them. Um, and when you have, you know, medium to high self-worth, medium to high, it can look like you're going for the things and you get them and you achieve them and, 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 and you might even believe you're worthy of them, but you still feel like you're not enough and you feel like something's missing like perpetually. And so those are kind of the, the three ways um, that it can show up in, in our lives. And so when we learn to build, um, the last thing I'll say is that when we learn to build self-worth, because sometimes people... Um, who are ambitious, really, well, wait a minute, if I feel like I'm enough as I am, well, then I not go for anything. Well, I not, you know, that kind of thing. And it's like, no, it's actually the opposite. When you, when you believe you're enough as who you are, you become fearless about going for stuff because if you fall flat on your face and fail miserably, like it might, it might rock your confidence for a minute, but it does not shake your foundation of, of self-worth. So I found in life, you actually become so much more ambitious and, and all of that when you actually believe at your core that who you are is enough. And the difference is that when you actually then go for those things, you can enjoy them when you're going for them. You can actually feel fulfilled when you get them versus like, it's never, ever enough. Woo, drop the mic. I, <laughs> I love it. I actually was seeing the emoji. It's so funny. I say on this show a lot. Um, mind glown because we always say we don't want our mind blown. I'm just seeing it like glowing like this yes. is brilliant, Jamie. Mm -hmm. You know, what's coming to me and I'm curious because you mentioned this earlier as you were, I love that you just read the differences because you can feel like this confidence is really more achievement focused. And you said the outer, it almost feels like, I love metaphors, right? Like you build a house, the foundation, the very core of who you are is worthy. It's the inner, it's the self-love. It's, And so we don't want to build our house on quicksand or on like, like the, the achievement, the confidence comes from achievement. And I actually, this is brilliant. I know that Whoever's listening, we have a very like high achieving type of listener listening that, you know, I, that wants to make an impact, wants to do good things in the world, loves, you know, loves that achievement and, and, and being ambitious. I love what you said though. And I actually could feel it energetically. Like this is a very different land that we're going to the self-worth. This is very different than confidence. And, you know, it's amazing to me because as you said, like 
you you have you could have all the things, you could have all the achievements, but if you're not feeling worthy, and I love how you went through the low, the medium, and the medium to to high, because even medium self worth, you're 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 not going to feel fulfilled. That is the, exactly what you said. It's so brilliant. Um, we tend to get a little into like the spiritual here. I don't know if that's okay with you, but I'm curious because you did mention you mentioned body doubt, self doubt, and you mentioned God doubt, and in my heart, as you were speaking, and I can tell because I'm feeling like I can just feel it in my body as you're talking about self worth. You know, I almost want to cry. It's like um, there's a greater spiritual connection here. Like I, I feel there's a connection with the God doubt, and I don't know that that's the case. But I'm curious if maybe you have any thoughts on that, and and maybe your own experience. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, I was raised going in tr- going to church and all of that, and then I I thought I believed in God, all the things. And I went through this season in my 20s um, and early 30s where I was around a whole lot of people that have no faith or different faith or believe in science and this and that. And I kind of went through this long season of wondering if it really exists. And there was a moment, you know, I'm adopted and um, through adoption have, and divorces, et cetera, in my various families, I have five families. And uh, which I actually am so blessed and grateful for. I love them. And also the way I was raised, no one in my family had ever gone to therapy. Um, and I was going through a really tough time in my late 20s. And I decided I needed to see somebody. And so it was the first person in my family is to go to, to therapy. And and I remember this moment, Julie, as it pertains to God doubt, where I was, I was sitting there with this therapist and to this day I have and she was wonderful. I have no idea what she believes or if she has any particular, she practices any particular faith. But one moment I said to her this, and maybe it's gonna help someone else out there today hearing this, but I said to her, uh, you know, all the reasons I'm struggling. And then I said, and on top of it all, I don't even know if I believe God exists. And I said, I pray, but then I, I don't really know and all this kind of thing. And she stopped me and she says, well, what makes you think God can't handle your doubt? And I'm like, what do you mean? And she goes, well, if he created the entire universe, what makes you think he can't handle your doubt? She's like, why don't you just try praying and telling him you're doubting he exists and ask him to prove you wrong? And I'm like, okay. And so from that point forward, literally, and this is embarrassing, but I'm just going to share it because again, maybe someone needs to hear this thing. From that point forward, every time I would pray, whether it was for like a friend's health or whatever it might be. I would end my prayer with, um, and by the way, God, I'm doubting you exist. So if you could please show up in my life and prove me wrong beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'd be so grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. Like that was how I'd end every prayer. And it didn't happen overnight, but it started happening, like literally beyond a shadow of a doubt. And there were moments, oh my goodness, moments that are just undeniable, where like after years of rejections building at cosmetics, like somebody literally would just open the store and later I would ask them and I would be like, thank you so much for believing in this product. And they're like, oh, I think your product's great, but that's not why I, I did that. I, I literally just felt God tell me to do that. And I'm like, huh? Like there's just these moments that were just undeniable to me. And so for me, faith has become a really important part of my life. And in the book Worthy, when I go into like the 20 tools on how to build unshakable self-worth, the book is for everybody, regardless of if they practice any particular faith or not. But what I will say is for for anybody who does have strong faith, whether it is strong faith in the universe being divinely orchestrated or strong, you know, for me, I'm a Christian, strong faith in, in whatever faith you practice. There's an um, entire chapter called, Who Are You Really Doubting? And it's one of my favorite chapters because I had this huge realization that you know, and, and I'll use my example that, that anyone listening can apply to their to their uh, beliefs as well. But if I'm really saying I believe God's word, where when He says, you know, you're you're wonderfully made in my image, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. All of it. If I really am believing His word, then how am I thinking I'm not enough? How am I thinking I don't have what it takes? How am I thinking I'm unqualified? How am I thinking I don't belong in this room? And what I realized, Julie, was so much of my self-doubt is actually doubting his word. So my self-doubt is actually really God-doubt 
And it's, it's me trusting my own thoughts and doubting his word. And so one of the most powerful tools for anyone that does have strong faith when it comes to self-doubt is you, it, the second you start to have those thoughts, and this is what I do every day, the second I start to have the, and I still every day have thoughts like, oh, I'm not enough. I don't have what it takes. I'm, I, I'm unqualified, all those things, which I've learned, by the way, now through meeting some of my greatest mentors, I could have only imagined meeting. Oh my gosh. Like I could have, and, and I realized they have these same struggles too. So, so anybody listening who struggles with self-doubt and these kind of thoughts, A, just know, oh, you're not alone. And it's no indication of your potential or your future success. I have not met a single person that doesn't have them. Um, but anyhow, to this day, like every day I have them, when I start to think those thoughts, I, one of the 20 plus tools in the book is, is I will intercept my thoughts and make a decision. Who am I really doubting? Because if I'm going to sit here and believe these thoughts, I'm trusting my thoughts and doubting God's word. So am I, who am I going to choose to believe today? Am I going to choose to put my faith in my own self-doubt and my own thoughts? Or am I going to choose to put my faith in God's word that I am fearfully and wonderfully made, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? Like literally that, 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 that I am, you know, made in his image and have everything that I, I need. And, and so it helps me in a moment, the second, and by the way, you can apply this in simple things. Like when you're, you're going to walk into a new friend group at coffee and you just don't feel like you're cool enough or whatever it is. Right. I instantly decide like, Oh, like I know who I am. I know whose I am. I know who, you know, who's walking in this room with me. And I make that decision to uh, to turn down the volume on my own thoughts, turn up the volume on his word. And, and it's one of the, for me, the most instantaneous, powerful shortcuts uh, to, to building self-worth because at an identity level, I know whose I am uh, and, and, and I know who made me. So yeah, I go into how to do that. And, and I think that there's so many people I know that, that really faith is such an important part of their life. And yet they don't realize they're not believing what they say they believe when they doubt their own, when they doubt their own uh, worth. Ooh, amen, Jamie. That is, <laughs> that, that is, I, I'm like, yep, yeah, that is, that I have no words, which is very rare. I always have a lot of words. Um, that is so beautiful. I mm. love, thank you. Thank you. You know, and I can imagine no matter what somebody's faith is or what that looks like or how it came from or that the faith in, like you said, however you call it, right? We've had all kinds of people, the universal field, God, consciousness, Christ, whoever, whatever that is for you. This, I love that you said it's a shortcut and I know there are other tools. Um, this one just intuitively feels so flip and powerful because in that moment, you just said something that is, again, mind-blowing. Do I trust the thoughts, which by the way, got me here, which by the way, are lacking and probably, you know, like you said, your mentors have these, like we're going to have these, but that's not the truth. And so am I going to go to those thoughts or am I going to go to the truth? Am I going to go to the, the faith that is, that is the core of who I am? So I'm so grateful you went into that. It's so beautiful. And I think uh, anyone, anyone can apply that. Just even that question, like, who am I doubting? <laughs> Who am I doubting? You said that. It's so beautiful. Who am I doubting? Like, what thoughts am I going to trust here? I'm going to trust those thoughts? Those limiting thoughts? Really? Yeah. And also, like, one of the questions I learned to ask too is just, you know, what am um, trusting those thoughts? And what is trusting self that already cost you in your life and in your relationships and in your ambitions and all of that? And so, yeah, it's, um, I love thinking of it that way. Um, especially because as human beings, we're like wired to avoid pain in our lives. And so when we associate pain with trusting our own self-doubt, it's a really great perspective because it, it's, a, it's a quick way to help us shift out of that as well. Mm. Yeah. I know we have to wrap in a moment. First of all, we'll have all of your information and your book. Like every single human being needs to read this and listen to this. And I just... Thank you. For, one thing I just, one of the many things I love about you is your authenticity and your mm -hmm. vulnerability. And I just want to like thank you and honor you. And 
I call them, so I call them heart flares, Jamie. It's where your heart is like, I did not get to share this. And I just want to ask if there's a heart flare or something that I didn't ask or just something that's coming through you about worthiness, about anything we've talked about before we wrap that it feels it's on your heart to share. Mm. Well, the first thing that's on my heart to share is just how beautiful your soul is and how it literally like penetrates through everything and it was it's beautiful to see that before we start recording you know it was like you just it it just like feels the whole room um and i think sometimes for people that maybe haven't met the person in person who you know like maybe some of your community has not yet met you in person and i just wanted to share and honor that part of you that i felt so strongly right away that's a gift to the world Um, So that's one thing I want to share. And the other thing I want to share is, you know, for me, um, self-worth is literally my life's greatest passion. I feel like, and I feel like this book worthy is the best work of my life. And uh, I'm donating a hundred percent of the proceeds. It's literally just because it is, I think the single biggest thing that changes everything. And in the book worthy, um, I'm so passionate about, and I just, I can't, when I think about how 80% of women struggle with self-doubt and I just think of when when we build self-worth like I imagine the businesses that will be launched ideas that will be put out there the unhealthy relationships that will finally end the like all the books that will be written like the ideas that will be shared I and I'm I'm so passionate about it and so with um in worthy what I did uh is um, and I've never done this before but in the very back of it um in the final and hardcover that's out now. I'm so excited. It's out this it's out this week, which I'm really, really excited. Uh, but in the back of it, I put like this traditional library card because um, and if you remember them like super old school, you write your name in it. And my hope literally, this is my only ask of everyone that gets the book, is that once you're done reading it, will you write the name of another woman? Like literally give your book to someone else um, who can benefit from it and pass it on because I just think it is just, I mean, the numbers are staggering and, and it's a lie, like, like fundamental lie. I don't, and, and I don't, and, and by the way, like some of the stuff I share in the book is so, and it's not an autobiography. This is a book about tools you can apply to your life right now. But I share a couple of things in the book that are so embarrassing, so mortifying. I took out a bunch of times, but I just decided, you know what, this book is not about me. I want every single person who feels like their past, their past mistakes, their past regrets, their past failures, who they've hurt, the things they wish they could end it. None of those impact your worth. None of those define your potential or what you can do in the future. And like, I go through tools on how you can overcome all that and reframe all of it. And, and, you know, for anyone who feels like they've put their idea out there, but it's been done a million times or, um, hold on a minute, I just thought, uh, maybe should I grab it? Maybe I'm still on. Okay. For anyone who feels like they've, you know, failed too many times or aren't getting traction or they're tempted to give up, like I go just into so many tools on um, a habit because a lot of times when we think we failed so many times or we've been rejected so many times, it's not much of confidence. So we take it to an identity level and we think I'm a failure, I'm a reject, and that's when it starts to affect our self worth. So I go in deep about the difference in how to even rethink situations to help heal from them and to not let them identify yourself with. So anyhow, I'm I'm so passionate. My only ask is just anybody who gets a copy of Worthy that um, please share your copy with someone else when you're done. And if you've like marked it up and made so many notes you don't want to, then you can still get them a copy and just write their name in your library card because I just feel like no girl, no woman, no person left behind in knowing they're worthy. And I'm so passionate and excited about it. So yeah. First of all, thank you. Thank you. I'm like sitting, I just can't even, this, you, you're just how you're here to inspire and to be so real. It's one of the other things I love about you, Jamie. And I love this library card idea. I still love those. (laughs) Like the ones that like, they get like yellowed kind of over time and you see the date and then cross it out. And um, 
I love that idea that we can all share this. The, the last thing I'll just say is it's really what you said is that let's stop believing this lie. It, I mean, it makes me want to cry because I know it's something I've been working on. I know that many, many just from the listeners that have written in that I've gotten to know and those I don't know, I 80%, the statistics, 80%, it's like, this is a lie. This is not even true. We are not our achievements. That's not has nothing to do with anything. It's like mm -hmm. a lovely window dressing. It has nothing mm -hmm. to do with the house. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you. You thank are you. such an angel. I thank you for what you said. I just, I love you. I love your energy. I love the work you're doing. I'm so grateful. I think it's amazing you're donating the proceeds. And I, I just, maybe some other day we'll have you back to talk even more about some of these things. But I know you have so many tools. There's so much here to help everybody really, really own their worthiness. Because the truth is we are. And the more I really do believe, I'm sure you feel this way, the way to have that peace that we want to see in the greater world, it starts, I believe, with ourselves and with feeling this. And we can start with, you know, individually in ourselves. It's enough. It is enough. Yeah, that's yeah. where it all starts. Yep. And your depth in relationship and love with other people can only be as deep as your love. In relationship with yourself. So yes, your kids, your family, your the world, your goals, your ambition. Yes, absolutely. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm so grateful. And I'm excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. We'll have all the information. I know you're going to ask, to, so don't worry, my dear friend. We'll have everything. Everything will be listed. The link to Jamie's book, you've got to read it. I want to hear about it. You can share with me, with Jamie. Like You've got to read this book worthy and pass it on. Make the library card. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jamie, from the Thank bottom you. of my heart, from all of us, for being your mm -hmm. USU. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Totally. Mwah. My friend, I'm so grateful and honored to be here with you on your journey and being your USU. Thank you for watching this episode, for being part of this incredible community and this mission to really step into your light to your highest purpose. I believe that as we all do that, we all can really be our best selves and uplift consciousness and in humanity. So thank you. I also wanted to say that if you are looking for greater support right now, maybe you're having a health concern or you're looking to really step into that next version, best version of yourself, please come connect with me, whether it's for more resources or coaching or guidance. I would love to support you in any way that I can. Just go to julieresler.com. You can book a powerful one-on-one -on -one breakthrough session there. You can connect with me. I would love to meet you. I'd love to hear how I can be on this journey with you. And before I forget, if you'd like a little more of this good vibe uh, tribe and would like to digest these episodes with a high vibe community, just go to Facebook and look up the USU podcast community. You'll find us there. Love always. And thank you so much for taking the time and energy to truly stepping into your authenticity and being your USU.